IHNY2 is the new and completely revised version of Baby Audio's very first plugin, iHeart New York. With greatly improved sound, workflow and features, it's your perfect one-stop parallel compression tool for punchy drums, earth-shaking bass and in-your-face vocals and sounds. In this video tutorial, I will show you how to use IHNY2 and get the most out of your plugin. IHNY2 is not your average bread and butter compressor, but a highly specialized audio tool designed for one purpose, parallel compression. This classic mixing technique combines a dry track with a heavily compressed duplicate of itself and combines the best of both. The aggressive punch and tone of the overcompressed sound and the detail and dynamics of the original. That makes it a staple technique for musical genres that need larger than life impactful sounds. IHMY2 hosts a complete parallel compression configuration internally, so you don't have to set up any extra routing in your DAW. This speeds up your workflow and lets you focus on what matters most, your song. Unlike some of the multi-purpose compressors in your plugin folder, IHMY2 sounds everything but neutral. It is engineered to deliver the aggressive punch and coloration that is characteristic for parallel compression. Before we take an in-depth look at the individual controls, let's get an overview of the plugin and its general features. In the center you'll find the mixer section where you can adjust the dry wet balance as well as the compression intensity. In the upper left corner you can adjust oversampling. Higher settings will result in even more accurate sound processing but also increase CPU load. Press solo if you want to listen to the wet signal only regardless of the wet dry balance. In the middle of the upper section you can load, save and manage your presets. The eye icon on the right side of the upper bar activates the tooltips, which are very helpful to find your way around the plugin. You can save the current state of the plugin as default by clicking the cartridge icon. Now, whenever you load the plugin, it will open with these settings. To reset all parameters to your chosen default state, click the circle icon. At the bottom, you'll find sliders to nudge the automatic makeup gain level and set the output level. To open the compressor and tone settings, press tweak. Hold the command key while adjusting any parameter for fine tuning. And as with all Baby Audio plugins, press the Baby Audio logo to mute the plugin. The central mixer lets you adjust a combination of parameters with one mouse movement and provides you with visual and numeric feedback at the same time. On the vertical axis, you can adjust the dry-wet balance. Turn it all the way down to hear just the dry signal. All the way up to hear just the compressed signal. Or somewhere in between for a mix of both. Once you've found your optimal dry-wet balance and you want to listen to the compressed signal only without changing the settings in the mixer, press solo. The horizontal axis sets the intensity of the compression. Set all the way to the left, the signal is not compressed at all. The further you move the pointer to the right, the more intense the compression will get. Under the hood, intensity combines two parameters, threshold and auto makeup gain level. The threshold is the volume level that has to be surpassed to trigger the compressor. Whenever your signal gets louder than the threshold, the compressor starts working. So the lower the threshold, the more often and intense the compressor will affect your signal. In IHNY2, the threshold is controlled with the intensity fader. Just move intensity to the right for more compression. Intensity is also conveniently linked with the auto makeup gain level. As you turn up the intensity, makeup gain is automatically adjusted in the background to deliver consistent levels across the whole range. Thanks to the limiter at the end of the signal chain, you don't have to worry about clipping no matter how hard you drive the auto gain. As you move the pointer up and down to adjust your mix level or from left to right to set the intensity, you'll notice values changing on the left side of the mixer section under the abbreviation AGR.
AGR stands for Adjusted Gain Reduction. This meter gives you a numeric feedback about the intensity of your sound. It takes into account the current gain reduction and dry-wet balance to give you an adjusted value for your output level. In other words, the lower the AGR value dips below zero, the more impactful your sound is. As IHMY2 is designed for aggressive parallel compression, you will typically want to aim at AGR levels between minus 10 and minus 20. Note that the stronger your sound is being compressed, the less wet level it will take to achieve that value. IHMI2 contains an automatic makeup gain algorithm that adjusts the gain level in the background to deliver the most consistent output level possible. This way you can focus on setting dynamics and tone and don't have to bother continuously adjusting levels along the way. Because the dynamic range of the signal can be so different from one sound to another, we also included a auto gain nudge slider. If you feel the makeup gain is too low or too high for your sound, you can adjust the behavior of the auto gain algorithm to your needs. You can also use the auto gain slider as a sound design tool. As you turn it up, you'll notice the sound gets increasingly squashed and distorted, which can be a desirable effect. Note that this only affects the compressed signal and leaves the dry signal unaltered. Now let's take a look under the hood. To access the advanced settings, press Tweak. Here you'll find the in-depth settings for compression and tone. Please keep in mind that IHMY2 is a parallel compression tool. In the next segment, however, I will often show you just the wet signal in order to better demonstrate the features. In real life use, you will typically mix this with the dry signal. Attack sets how fast the compression is applied after a peak. The lower the attack time, the snappier the compressor will react to your sound. Or in other words, at fast attack settings, the plugin will start compressing right away once your signal exceeds the threshold. The further you turn attack up, the slower the compression kicks in, so it will take the compressor a bit longer to get going once your signal peaks. Release works just like that, but affects how the compressor stops compressing once the signal drops below the threshold again. A fast release setting means that compression stops rather abruptly. At long release settings, the level of compression will slowly drop. So by adjusting attack and release, you can alter the dynamic profile of your signal. Say you want to compress a drum break. First, let's listen to the dry loop. Now I'll activate the compressor and turn the attack level all the way down. Eventually, the compression sets in so fast that it reduces the transients, the initial peaks of the drum hits. This takes away a lot of the punch and lets the drum break sound soft and unnatural. To fix this, I will now carefully raise the attack. At some point, the attack is slow enough to let the initial transients pass. The drum sounds punchy again. Setting the release time follows the same principle. Let's take a listen at our drum break again and set a very long release time. Once a drum beat triggers the compressor, it starts working. But because the release time is so long now, the compressor is still working when the next drum beat comes in. The drums are now faster than the compressor, so it can't catch up and never stops compressing. Effectively, there's not much change in dynamics at all. Everything is just equally less loud. Once I turn down the release time, the compressor reacts more snappy until eventually it returns to zero compression before the next drum beat hits.
Now we found an attack setting that's slow enough to let the transients pass, but quick enough to compress the rest of the drum sound. And we found a release time that's fast enough to reset the compressor before the next drum sound comes in. If we AB the dry and the wet signal, we can tell that the compressor adds a lot of presence and punch to the drum break and brings the details to the front. Now blend in the dry signal and we're ready to go. What this example demonstrates is that by carefully adjusting the attack and release time, you can shape the dynamic behavior of your track or sound. There are no golden rules how to set attack and release for different signals, and especially with this type of compression, it's more a question of taste. If you're unsure what you're doing, browse the presets until you find something that's in the ballpark of what you're looking for and take it from there. While attack and release set how fast compression starts and stops once the threshold is passed, ratio sets the amount of compression applied. The higher you set the ratio, the stronger the peaks of your sound will be reduced. Let's say your signal peaks 10 dB above threshold. If you dial in a ratio of 1 to 2, your signal will be reduced by a factor of 2. So if your signal peaked 10 dB above threshold, it will now peak 5 dB. If you set the ratio to 1 to 5, it will now be reduced by a factor of 5. So 10 dB above threshold become 2 dB. This means 8 dB of headroom are now available for the auto makeup gain to boost the signal. As you reduce the dynamic range of your signal, you increase its perceived loudness. The peaks are still the same, but everything else gets louder. A low ratio is useful to carefully tame the peaks of a signal while retaining a more or less natural sound. At higher ratios, the sound gets an increasingly squashed or pumping character. While this effect could be seen as problematic in some scenarios, in parallel compression it is quite desirable. As you eventually blend the compressed signal with the dry sound that still contains all the details and dynamics, you can really go to town and blow up your drums with extreme ratio and intensity settings. Punch emphasizes the transients. This parameter is useful to give percussive material even more impact. Harmonics adds gain reduction controlled saturation to the sound. The more your sound is compressed, the stronger it will be saturated, adding more tone and character. Shape is an EQ that emphasizes both low and high frequencies. As in classic New York or Motown compression, the smiley curve EQ adds to the hi-fi sound aesthetic. Just turn it up to set the intensity of the effect. Note that shape affects the sound after compression and has no effect on the behavior of the compressor itself. Tilt, on the other hand, modifies the response of the compressor towards high or low frequencies. If you turn it down, you will compress the low end of the signal stronger. If you turn tilt up, you will compress the high end more. Tilt can be useful to improve the tonal balance and optimize the compressor's response to your signal. With low preserve, you can exclude the low end of your sound from compression completely. If you set it to 120Hz, for example, everything below that frequency passes through the compressor unaffected, while everything above 120Hz is still being compressed. This doesn't mean that frequencies below 120 Hz are attenuated or even completely removed from the signal. On the contrary, because the low end is not being compressed, it is even more prominent than before. So if you're compressing a kick drum, a drum bus or any other bass heavy sound, low preserve can make sure you retain the low end and don't lose too much low frequency energy through compression. 
High preserve works just the other way around. Everything above the set frequency passes uncompressed. This is useful when you want the compressor to focus on low and mid-range signals such as kicks and snares, but leave the high-end sizzle like hi-hats and shakers alone. This concludes our tutorial. We hope you enjoy IHNY2 and this video helps you make amazing music with your plugin. Thanks for watching and see you soon.